Hello, my name is Joanna Grace. I run the Sensory Projects and I'm a Sensory Engagement and Inclusion Specialist. The Sensory Projects run on the idea that you don't need expensive resources to do effective sensory work. What you need is the right knowledge and the willingness to be a little bit creative and you can do really effective things with improvised resources. And through my work at the projects, through the training that I provide to settings, through the books that I publish and through the information that I share online in my social media channels, I work to share that knowledge and insight and also hopefully to share a few creative ideas that you can pick up and use. One of the sensory projects is the Sensory Story Project. Sensory stories are concise narratives, typically seven to ten sentences long, and each sentence in those narratives is partnered with a rich and relevant sensory experience so that the narrative can be accessed through the words or through the sensory experiences or through both, and the meaning is equally weighted between the two. So they are ideal resources for using to engage people who do not access meaning through language. So a lot of my work focuses on people who I refer to as sensory beings. And those are people whose primary experience of the world and meaning within it is sensory. So that's people who have complex disabilities, people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. And it also encompasses a lot of other people, for example, people with later stage dementia and some forms of autism and people with various rare syndromes. There's a lot of people who fall into this group of sensory beings and they're all fabulous in different ways. Um, and traditionally, sensory stories are thought of as being a resource for those people. But here's a resource that enables learning for people who face enormous barriers to their learning. It stands to reason that it would also enable learning for people who don't face quite so many barriers. So I love it when I get to use the sensory stories or share sensory engagement strategies with people who work in mainstream education settings because we are all, in all our education settings, experiencing a rise in sensory needs. So we have in this resource an answer to those needs. But actually, even where you don't have specific sensory needs, sharing a sensory story can be a really beneficial addition to your teaching. And so in this little video, I just want to share one strategy that I would use, and that is bookending a lesson with a sensory story. So we know lots of things about sensory experiences and how they affect our learning. And in a tiny little video like this, I can't tell you them. I can just list them for you. So we know that sensory experience supports our ability and readiness to learn. Sensory experience supports our concentration, and obviously if you're supporting concentration, then that's going to have an impact on your learning. Sensory experience supports the development of our cognition, which is just amazing, and sensory experience supports our memory. And so all these things, by teaching in a multi-sensory way, you are boosting your students' abilities to engage, to concentrate, to learn and to remember. That is exactly what every teacher is looking to do. And in terms of just looking at the brain as you learn, if you learn in a multi-sensory way, if you were to put somebody in a, in a scanner and watch their brain as you teach in a multi-sensory way, what you would see is that more areas of the brain are involved in their learning. And, you know, if you've got more of your brain involved in your learning, more of your brain is there to remember that learning. And actually, if more of your brain is involved in your learning, more of your brain is a part of the understanding process. It's like having several different people attack a problem. You each come at it from a different angle. When you use all your senses in your learning, your senses work together and they each bring something different to the, your learning and it enriches your education. And what we tend to do in our practice as teachers is as soon as abstract concepts have been secured, we take away the concrete resources and we take away the multisensory strategies that we would typically use with younger students because we don't need them anymore. But just because we don't need them doesn't mean there isn't a benefit to them. And if you look, if you talk to people who work at very high level in academia, you know, people who are doing complex physics or um, historians looking back into the past, they will talk of the value of actually 
doing the research, touching the objects, of running the experiment. In parts of physics, we have experiments running that we can do solely in computers, but we still get a better learning experience when we do it with the real stuff. So there is a, there is a real benefit to doing sensory in general and a sensory story is just one of these things. So if I was going to bookend a lesson with a sensory story I would first create a sensory story that encapsulated the topic that I was teaching for that half term or the topic that I'm addressing for this particular set of lessons. It might be that I summarise the whole of that topic in my sensory story or it might be that I choose a story from within that topic that represents the broader topic itself. I would then begin my lessons by sharing that sensory story. And it takes, you know, five to ten minutes to share a sensory story. So it's not a big deal to put one into the start of your lessons. And if you're using stories like mine, then they're resourced with very everyday items that you would have around your kitchen or have around your house. So there's not a big resource burden. You don't need to, you know, apply for extra money from your budget in order to run a sensory story. It's a very simple thing. Once I've shared the story, then I'm going to focus on maybe just the first sentence or the first couple of sentences. And we're going to do activities within that lesson that unpack the meaning of those sentences and, you know, link up to other things that attach them. It depends on what the topic is. I have in my collection of sensory stories that I um, have published online, I have a story about the birth of a star in a stellar nursery and that story is one I love to tell if you've seen me speaking at a conference you've probably heard me tell the birth of a star story because it's just a gorgeous one and in seven sentences it describes how stars are formed in stellar nurseries so there is masses of information in those seven sentences the first sentence in the birth of a star is about hydrogen clouds so I could study hydrogen clouds for a whole lesson and I could do that in different ways I could do that in a very sensitive sensory way, looking at particle dispersion in a purely sensory way, you know, throwing a load of ball pull balls across the floor is particle dispersion, blowing bubbles is particle dispersion, or I could study particle dispersion at the level that, you know, the people on the boundaries of understanding particle dispersion study it at. Wherever my learners are at, I can provide an activity within that lesson that is relevant to that first sentence of that story and is relevant to them. And then at the end of that lesson, we come back together and we share the story again. And now those sentence, that sentence or those sentences that we've been studying have got more meaning attached to them when we hear them and when we experience them because they relate to all the learning from within that lesson. By the end of the term, you are going to remember that story. And this is where, you know, it's sensory. We quite often think about, or I certainly quite often think about, the benefits of doing the sensory part. It's a sensory story. There's a huge benefit in doing the story part too. I expect at some point in your life you've revised for an exam and I imagine that if you did that, one of the things you would have done was make bullet points on a topic and try and remember those bullet points. And maybe you generated some way of remembering them, probably an acronym. That's what I used to do when I was studying. I would write down all my notes. I'd make notes on my notes, notes on my notes. I'd come up with the bullet points for the topic. I'd take the first letter of each line of those bullet points, make some horrible acronym to carry into the exam that I could then expand out to those bullet points. I bet you remember doing that. Do you remember what the bullet points were? No. Neither do I. <laughs> I. I did really well in my exams. I can't remember what those bullet points were. Had those bullet points been a story, I would have been able to tell it to you now. I bet you remember a story that you heard just once at, around that time. You know, a story from a mate's drunken night out, or a story that you watched on television, or a story that you were told in an assembly at school. Stories hold together. You know, those individual sentences link up and we remember them as whole things. So you just need to remember the story and you have all the sentences. And if your bullet points for your topic are a story that you've already learned, like a sensory story that you've heard twice a lesson for the whole of term, that you are sick to death of hearing now and you know by heart. And what's more, you're going to remember it even more because it was sensory, because there were experiences attached to it. Things that you bump into in your daily life are going to remind you of the story through your senses. Then that is a lovely way to package up your learning and retain it, you know, 
for a very long time in a meaningful way. So I would wholeheartedly recommend that you use sensory stories for that reason and for a whole load of others that I can't fit into this little video um, with your mainstream learners as well as your students with complex needs. If you'd like to know more about sensory stories, do come and look me up online. I've got lots of information that's freely available on my website, as well as the books and the sensory stories that you can purchase. And I am zapping around the country and occasionally around the world delivering training. So it would be lovely to meet you somewhere. Come and find me on the internet. Thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you have fun on your sensory adventures. Bye.